Today we are learning about time-dependent circuits. For today's lesson, you need a battery module, two LED modules, and our new component on the bench, which is the blinker module. The blinker module has a potentiometer and a 555 timer that work together to create a signal that changes with time. A 555 timer is a tiny integrated circuit, which is composed of many transistors. These transistors work together to produce an output that flip-flops between positive and negative. On page 11 of our notebook, we will build our circuit and populate it with our components. Taking a closer look at how our components are connected, uh, we can see that our blinker module has some letters on it that we haven't seen before. This right here says VCC, that gets connected to positive, and down here it says ground, that gets connected to negative. If we look at our bottom LED, we can see that one side of our LED is connected to the negative side of our power, and in the middle, it takes a pit stop at our blinker module. The top LED, one side is connected to the positive side of our battery, and again, takes a pit stop at the blinker module. Both of the other ends of the LEDs are connected to the output of the blinker module. If we turn the potentiometer on the blinker module counterclockwise, we can see the frequency that the LEDs flash at increases. If we rotate the blinker module back clockwise, the frequency decreases. This is an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is a super cool tool that is used in electronics that allows us to analyze our circuit and see how the voltage is changing over time. To analyze a component with the oscilloscope, I need to connect it in parallel with that component. To do that, I need to modify my circuit so I can add these alligator clips. With my oscilloscope connected to my modified circuit, I can turn my battery on and see my LED start to flash. Let's take a closer look at our oscilloscope and we can see that we are generating a square wave. As I rotate the potentiometer on my blinker module, I can see the frequency at which my LED flashes increases. I can also see that the frequency of my wave increases on my oscilloscope. If I rotate it clockwise, I can see the frequency decreasing. I'm going to make a circuit to change the behavior of my LED. I'm going to use my blinker module, but now I would like my LED to not just blink, I also want it to fade. In my circuit, I have my power module that is connected to my blinker module through VCC and ground. My blinker module is connected to my diode and my diode is connected to my LED and my capacitor, which are in parallel. A capacitor is like a rechargeable battery in our circuit. When current is flowing in the circuit, the capacitor charges. When the current stops flowing, it discharges through the LED. We have forced it to do that by placing a diode in between the capacitor and the blinker module. Remember, a diode only allows current to flow in one direction. To understand why the capacitor will cause the LED to fade instead of simply turn off, you can think of the charged capacitor as a can of soda that we then shake up. When we crack open the can, soda shoots out. As the volume of soda in the can decreases, the pressure also decreases and the amount of soda shooting out decreases. This is similar to how our capacitor drains. This is probably the most complex topic we've covered so far, and if you don't quite understand it, don't worry. With my circuit on, my current is flowing from the positive side of my battery, through the blinker module, through the diode, and into this parallel configuration of the LED and the capacitor. Let's take a look at what's happening on our oscilloscope. Our square wave is no longer square. It has this curved part to it, and that is because of our capacitor. When our voltage drops, our current is released from the capacitor and the LED dims, indicated by this curved bit of our graph. If we look back at our circuit, the green LED represents our raw signal, and the blue fading LED represents the effect that the capacitor has on our circuit. What's cool about this circuit is that we were able to combine different components from different pages in our notebook to create a circuit that exhibits a behavior we've never seen. Try creating your own custom circuit by combining modules that you have. Thanks to CircuitScribe for sponsoring this series of educational videos. All of the components in this video are for sale on the CircuitScribe website. Use code BURBOWIEMAKERS to get 15% off. Also on the website is troubleshooting help if you're having trouble with your pen or any of the components. And while you're there, you can sign up for their live classes. I'm Ms. Burbawi. Tune in next time to learn about transistors.